Have you ever had to close a deal? Maybe this is convincing your spouse to buy that boat you've always wanted. Or maybe it's asking that pretty girl out for the first time, securing that first date. Or maybe it's convincing your business partner to agree on a decision that you've been trying to make that would affect the company. Whatever the case may be, we all need to develop persuasion. Now, children are naturally born with this. You see that every time that they're able to, to get the cookie before dinner with those puppy dog eyes. But there are things that you can do to increase that ability within yourself and within your professional sphere by paying attention to the skill set of persuasion. Now, there's a lot to it. I mean, there's so much more than I can go into right now. Um, there's the whole, the triangle, uh, ethos, logos, pathos, your, your, your emo appeal to emotions, your appeal to logic or proof, your credibility. There's reciprocity. There's so many things. But what I want to do today is to rapid fire some, some keys to persuasion that are particularly important in the realm of business. Now, this applies to a lot of areas in your life, but I really want to hone in and focus on ways to be successful um, using persuasion in your career and in your company. So the first thing is novelty. Everyone likes something new, something that is exciting. You know, the, the, the shiny object syndrome. People tend to be filled with a sense of excitement when you're introducing or sharing or showing something new that maybe hasn't been seen before or maybe they haven't considered. Now, when it comes to your company or to your products, that might be adding a new benefit, a new feature, doing an update, something new that's going to draw them in. And you want to highlight that right in the beginning because it builds that excitement and it captures their attention. Now, the next thing is just asking, you know, why did you want to meet today? Now, the goal of that is so you can kind of get to the heart of their motivations. What is it that they really want? You know, access the reasons for their engagement. And then that way you can take note of their needs and of their particular desires. Third, focus on the other person, right? So say you often, far more than you say I. Now, what's Typically, it tends to happen with, with salespeople is they talk about themselves. You know, I have this background and I have this product and let me tell you how great it is, what we do, blah, blah, blah. No one really cares. People care about themselves and what interests them. So you want to talk about them. Point out you, you, you. Here's what can help you. Here is a benefit for you. That is going to help dramatically increase their desire to continue this conversation and their potential agreement with what you're getting to in terms of the punchline and, and sealing the deal. Now, also you want to ask them, and this is a, an, another key, what is it that they want to accomplish? Now, you'd be surprised how much information you can get just by asking. Sometimes we uh, try to guess what, what someone wants and then we try to, to, to give that to them when really it might not be what they're interested in at all. And if you ask them, you know, what are you wanting to accomplish? They might just tell you right off the rip and then you can target your approach directly to that. And that's going to increase your ability to be successful. It's going to increase your persuasion. Next, I would ask what, what I call a compass question because it kind of directs, it guides the way. Um, so ask them, you know, what is your current status? Where are you currently at? Um, what you're doing here is you're inviting your, your prospect to identify where they're at and where they want to be. That way you can kind of highlight a roadmap to get them there, to get them to the place that they want. Um, you can be the one that says, well, here's how to achieve those dreams, to achieve those goals. So you're not beating around the bush and wasting time with things that don't interest them. Another key is to highlight free value. Everybody likes the word free. Now, you don't want to devalue what you're offering. You don't want to come across as, hey, I'm offering something that's cheap or very low value. But you do want to offer some things that are free. Because what happens when you offer something free is you give them the opportunity to explore an option uh, with low risk. Because if something's new, something maybe they don't know you, they don't know your product, they're unfamiliar with that. But if you can offer a, a free trial or or here's some free information, um, that's going to reduce the risk, and people just like to hear the word free. Um, and and that 
also softens the, the commitment of an obligation. So highlight free value and then identify roadblocks, right? So some professionals call this pain points. You know, what are the things that are keeping them from doing what they want, from achieving what they want? And so what you can do is you can just, again, ask them, you know, what's the problem? And how long have you been dealing with this? And they might tell you, you know, it's the problem is A, B, C, and D. Or you might need to do a little bit of exploration with them to figure those things out. But once you have specifically targeted the, the obstacles, the things that are holding them back, well, you can you can be the problem solver. You can be the one to say, hey, you know, here, here's here's the way through those things. And immediately that increases your uh, this persuasion skill, increases your credibility in their eyes, and makes moving forward a far more viable option because you have the solution to their needs. Your highest aspiration should always be being a problem solver for your clients. So that's another key. Uh, another one is exclusivity. People like to be part of the club that, that's difficult to get into. Uh, people like to be in on the inside joke. People like to be um, aware of the secret and, and know what's going on. So if you can offer exclusivity, if you can offer them an invitation into a special knowledge or an insight, um, that's going to make their ears perk up. They're going to be much more interested in what you've got to say. And a lot of that just has to do with, with framing the way you're presenting what you're presenting. Next, use the miracle question. Now, this is actually a counseling technique. This is something you can use with clients that are dealing with mental health issues. But it also works in business. And so it works kind of like this. Uh, with the, with, in counseling, you might say, if you woke up tomorrow and everything in your life was perfect, what would that look like? And then they'll tell you after a little bit of thought usually, and then that tells you what are the things that need to change, you know, so that they can, can live in that dream that they're, they're hoping for. Well, in business, you can say something like, well, if, if we finish this meeting and all your problems were solved, what would it look like? So again, you're helping them to visualize success and how you can help them accomplish it. Lastly, you want to focus on a sense of urgency. Delays kill sales. You, you, you don't want to be the guy that's on the dance floor that's, uh, that chokes and doesn't ask the girl out, that doesn't finish, you know, maybe he makes some, some light conversation with her, but he never asks for a dance. You need to ask them to take action immediately. And there are different ways. Uh, you can check out some other videos about ways to heighten urgency or ways to reveal that, that this is a decision that you need to make quickly. But one of the simplest things I can share with you right now is to say now. Take action now. Let's let's make a decision and move forward now. So urgency is very important. So ultimately, the goal is to explore and to, to understand your prospect. That way, you can show them how you are the one that meets their needs. These skills build certainty in your clients and you want them to feel certain. You want to remove, again, remove that risk, remove the doubt, remove the wonder, and, and build within your client in that very first interaction I am certain that this is the person that can help me, that this is the product that can meet my needs. And then you just remove the barriers to them taking real action. Do this and you will have mastered persuasion. Until next time, don't just be transformed, be kinged.